This is the first video in a series on how to initiate data loading in a React and Redux application. We've talked about loading data in the past in Redux applications. We usually call an action creator. An action creator might use a uh, HTTP request library, like say Axios, to make an Ajax request to some backend server where the request will be handle, handled, we'll get some response, and the response will end up in the reducer. And the reducer will then update our state with the new data that we got back from the server. So this is what happens whenever we want to make an Ajax request. But what happens before this? How do we call this action creator? There's several different ways in the Redux world to call this action creator whenever we want to make an Ajax request or whenever we want to fetch some data. Some of them are a little bit more organized than others. Some of them are certainly easier than others. We're going to be talking about one very specific way of fetching data in a React Redux application today. So just to be clear, the question we want to ask here is, something needs to call an action creator whenever we want to fetch our data. So what exactly is that? What are we, what are we calling? What, at what point in our application are we going to call the action creator? So one of the most common methods of loading data or initiate this loading of data is to stick a call to an action creator in component will mount, which would be placed inside of any of your given React components. We could also place a follow-up call inside of component will update. And so if the component is about to update, we need to fetch some new data, we can then call an action creator from there as well. Now this is a very popular pattern and so popular, in fact, that even the React Router documentation recommends that you call your action creators from component will mount. But I'm going to argue today that this is not a very good pattern. It's not the best pattern in the world for creating reusable components. Now let's talk about why. I've got a simple application right now that loads a series of images. These series of images are given via URLs that are provided by an Ajax endpoint. So whenever I come to my route slash photos, I need to first make an Ajax request to find out all the different images I need to load. And then I map over that list of images and place one image tag on the screen for each. So let's take a look at the component that's generating this code or generating that HTML. So here's my photos component. You can see that I've got a helper method render photos where I take a list of photos and for each one I render an image tag and here's the source of the the image itself thumbnail URL. So this assumes that hey I've already got my data in place and you can see right above it I have a component will mount that initiates that data loading process. So again, I'm going to argue that placing component will mount with a action creator inside of a component like so isn't the best practice in the world. And the reason for that is that if I want to reuse this component somewhere else in my application, you know, maybe I've got another page where I want to show uh, a what I've called a user list in this case, it's really a photo list. Maybe I want to show another one of these components somewhere else in my application. As soon as I place this component somewhere else in my application, I am implicitly saying, yes, I want to refetch my list of photos. Whenever this component is about to be shown, refetch my list of photos. And so if I want to reuse this component all over the place, maybe I've got several different types of photos I want to show, several different types of lists. In every single case, I would be refetching my photos, which is very possibly not something I want to do. So sticking calls to our action creators to fetch data inside of lifecycle methods, it definitely works, but it does not lead to reusable components. So let's investigate a slightly different way of loading up our data. I'm going to suggest that instead of sticking a call into component will mount to fetch our data, we're going to use React Router's onEnter callback to initiate our action creator uh, to load some data. This on enter that I've listed right here is a callback that's provided by React Router that's attached to an individual route inside of our application. I'm going to flip over to the React Router docs really quick. I'm on the API page with all the docs about all the different APIs. And so one of the possible props that we can pass to a route component that will define inside our router is the on enter, and I just lost it. Oh, where'd it go? There we go. Is the on renter callback. And so if we pass a function to the on renter prop, on enter prop for a single route, that function will be called whenever the route is about to be entered. And so I would argue that perhaps this is a better place to load our data. 
when our users are about to go to slash photos, that probably means I need to load my data right now. So as soon as someone is going to slash photos, I need to load my list of photos. And that should not necessarily be tied to an individual component. Maybe I just want to have it tied to this route slash photos. So we can use this on enter callback right here. So we know that whenever a user is about to go to route slash photos, we need to call an action creator and go fetch our list of photos. So let's do some refactoring to our application and see what this looks like in practice. First, I'm going to remove the fetch photos action creator from our component. And I no longer need to import my actions at the top because I'm not calling any action creators. And at the bottom, I'm also going to remove the pass of, action, of actions to the connect helper as well. So already this component looks a little bit smaller and certainly a little bit more reusable as well. Now it just takes a list of photos, renders them, and that's it. 100% reusable all over the place. Now for step two. Step two is to add an on enter callback to my photos route handler. So I'll, right now inside of my routes file, you can see that I've got my route here. And whenever someone visits photos, I should show the photos component. I'm going to create a new folder or excuse me, a new file to hold my callback here. I'm going to call it route callbacks.js. Now inside of here, I'm going to import my Redux store, which I've already uh, instantiated in another file. And then I'm also going to import my fetch photos action creator from my actions file. Now I'm going to declare a function that will be called whenever someone is about to enter the photos route. Inside of here, I'm going to dispatch my action creator. And that's pretty much it. So whenever this photo is executed, or excuse me, whenever this function is executed, I'm going to call my fetch photos action creator and pass the action directly to store.dispatch. If you're not familiar with store.dispatch, I recommend you go check out my video on uh, Redux Thunk, and it walks you through what dispatch does in great detail. So if dispatch is a little bit mysterious, go check out my video on Redux Thunk, and I bet you'll get it pretty quickly. So now I just need to make sure that this function right here is called whenever someone is about to visit that photos route. So back inside of my routes file, I will import on photos enter from route callbacks. And finally, the very last step, whenever someone is about to visit the route photos, so on enter, on photos enter, like so. So let's test this out in the browser. I'm gonna flip back over, we'll refresh the page. Sometimes this uh, API, endpoint, API endpoint is a little bit slow, so we'll give it a minute up, oh, but hey, look, looks like it worked out, everything's just fine. So my action creator to fetch my photos is still being called whenever I hit my photos route. Now with this refactor, I know that I can change up what component I show when someone hits the photos route, and I'm guaranteed that I'm still going to have access to my photos data by the time that they get inside of here. I'm also left with a much more reusable photos component so I can reuse this thing in the future and not have to worry about this thing trying to fetch its own data every time it's rendered to the screen. So again, this is one method for loading data inside of React Redux application, and there are several others. Using lifecycle methods is not inherently bad, but there are other alternatives that it really pays to be uh, aware of that you might want to use on your own application. If you enjoyed this video, I recommend you check out my website, rallycoding.com. We have weekly videos on JavaScript uh, topics focused on the React and Redux ecosystem. Check it out, sign up for the email list. I'll send you email, email once, a, once a week with one new video, always something interesting. So I'll catch you in one week from now where we're gonna talk about some more data loading methods.